What's up everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mike Versperl and for today's video, I wanna talk about a question that I'm often asked, which is why do I still use Starry Landscape Stacker versus my Star Tracker? Well, there's certain scenarios in which a Star Tracker just isn't ideal. So for example, I have this picture here that I took in North Carolina and this is a marsh that I stumbled upon because Outer Banks was closed off due to COVID and it had this really nice tree line that was reflecting in the stagnant water. And I also got the Milky Way reflection here, which is awesome. But uh, if I used a star tracker, it would blur these trees really bad. And then I would have to try and blend them back in with a still image. And it'd just be a editing nightmare. So I decided to use stacking software on these set of images instead. It's just going to make life a lot easier. Also, I was in a location where I was surrounded by trees, so trying to locate Polaris so I could polar align the star tracker just wasn't ideal. Now, if you're gonna use a star tracker and blend it with your foreground images, I highly recommend trying to find an open area so you don't have any obstructions in the lower portion of the sky like I do here in this particular shot. You could definitely blend in a clean Milky Way sky with uh, this foreground, although it's going to be quite tedious with all these tree branches. So in a scenario like this, um, to me, stacking is the best option. And also some people might not know this, but not only do you paint the sky, you could also paint the water reflection of the Milky Way and Starry Landscape Stacker or Sequator will track and stack the water reflection as well. So it's a really great alternative when you have a complex scenario like I have here. I also get asked this question quite often, do you stack and then edit or do you edit and then stack? Me personally, I like to stack first and then edit my image. Um, I'll do some minor editing like we're gonna do to these photos, but typically I will stack and then do my major editing towards the end. Um, I think it's also recommended by the software to do it that way. And some people go as far as pretty much turning everything off. They'll even take sharpening and put it down to zero. I won't touch the sharpening. I'll kind of leave it as is when I import the photos, but uh, everything else I, I won't touch. The only thing I'll do is just like basic stuff. Like maybe I'll adjust the exposure a little bit. So for example, with this photo, I'd put a gradient down here. You know, let me delete that. I'm gonna apply it to all my photos. I have 13 images here that I'm gonna stack. And uh, another question I get asked is how many photos should you stack? Typically 10 to 15 is ideal. Um, you'll see a difference between five and 10 photos. So five photos stacked is gonna have a little bit more noise than 10 photos. But there is a cutoff point. Like I think anything over 15 photos, you're not really seeing much of a difference as far as noise reduction. So 10 to 15 is ideal. Um, in this case, I have 13. I think I took out a photo or two because it was uh, slightly out of focus. But um, we're going to create a gradient filter down here. And what I wanna do is make more separation between these tree silhouettes and the Milky Way reflection here. So we're gonna do that by increasing the exposure a little bit, reducing my contrast bringing up my shadows a little bit more, as well as my whites. And now we have some more separation of the trees from the reflection of the Milky Way. Okay, done. And I'll also remove a little bit of this vignetting while I'm at it. So just increase the shadows, or raise the shadows, I should say. All right, I'm not gonna go too crazy. I'll just do that little bit and we'll export it. File, export. And you wanna export it as a TIFF file. Um, I created a subfolder called Milky Way Stack and I'm calling these photos Milky Way Stack. But I already exported these to save some time. So I'm just going to cancel that and close this program out. All right, so here is the folder with the Milky Way stack. I'm going to open up Starry Landscape Stacker and import those images. And I don't have any dark frames. Some people ask me about this. I'd rather have that spare time to find different compositions. So I typically don't take dark frames. Dark frames really help out if you're doing deep space um, photography. But as far as night landscape photography, I didn't really notice a huge difference with dark frames. 
Um, so it's kind of personal preference. Some people do them, some don't. I definitely recommend you try it out. Uh, for me, I'd rather have the spare time to find and create different compositions, and dark frames going, is going to eat up some of that time. So I just uh, don't deal with them at all. All right, so we're going to add some more red dots in between some of these tree branches where we have these big opening areas. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, we don't even have to get all the areas in between the trees when using Starry Landscape Stacker, especially because there's a decent amount of light pollution down here. So there's not too many stars that need to be tracked in those areas. So that's another great thing about this software. And go down here and we're gonna do fine sky you just want to fine-tune this a little bit so paint this area and the great thing with this software is you could be a little more liberal with painting you don't have to be perfect like you do in Photoshop when trying to mask things out. Oops. Zoom in here. Now I'm doing this pretty quick because it's, you know, a tutorial and I don't want to be here forever, but you really don't have to spend a bunch of time. You could do this in probably, you know, five to 10 minutes. Um, this is a little more complex, so maybe 15, 20 minutes but it's still a lot quicker than if I was to try and Photoshop all this in and using a tracker. I just want to get most of these bigger areas. Um, you don't really have to worry about these really fine areas in between these tree branches. You're not going to notice really the stars if they trail a little bit in between them. Um, if they, if there is some that you've missed, you could definitely fix that up in Photoshop. But for the most part, it's not an issue. I'll show you guys when I stack this that you're really not going to notice anything. And as I said before, the light pollution down here really. Um, diminish some of the stars so uh, there are really not too many visible stars in this particular area anyway. Now what you want to be critical of is actually the little fine tree branches and make sure you paint those back in. Otherwise you will see them blur from the program. So you definitely want to paint all these little tree branches back in so they're nice and sharp. It's easier in my opinion to fix a little star trail in between the trees than it is to fix the blurry tree itself. So um, to me, the, these are more critical. All right, so that looks pretty good. I just wanna get these little trees down here and bushes and stuff. And I'm just doing this really quick for the tutorial. You could take obviously a little more time than me, depending how complex your photo is. All right, that looks good enough. I'm gonna zoom out really quick, make sure I got the edges. Yeah, that should be good enough. The line and composite. Okay, let's zoom in here. And you can see what I'm talking about. You don't really notice any star trailing in between these branches, these uh, little fine areas that I didn't worry about. And then down here in the water, it align the stars and stack them so we have a nice clean foreground and pretty sharp stars in this reflection so that's awesome cool so next we're going to save this out and save it as a tiff
All right, so here's my stacked image, and I'm gonna grab a single image just so I can show you guys the difference in noise. And we're gonna open them up with Photoshop, which I already have over here. So on top is the single image. You can see the noise and a little bit of grain. And if we hide that, here's my stacked image. So before, after so it cleaned it up quite nicely uh, it definitely needs to be sharpened a little bit but I'm gonna do that in Lightroom so I'm gonna delete this single image and make a copy of my stacked images let's just do some quick editing in here for you guys so I'm gonna grab my dodge tool some people like to do s curves this is all pretty much personal preference um, I'm a minimalist when it comes to editing my Milky Way now. Back in the day, I used to go crazy with some of my editing habits, but now I like to just do some basic stuff. So I'm going to stick with dodging my highlights. I keep that at 1% and just go over here and brighten that up. I'm also going to dodge the highlights down here in the water. I'm actually going to go across this whole area and just brighten up some of these stars to make them pop a little bit more. I'm going to switch this to shadows and increase my brush size and just go along the bottom here and just trying to brighten that up a little bit more. Next I'm going to switch to burn. Make sure it's on shadows. Um, make the brush 14. I'm going to go across the whole sky really quick just with a couple passes. Darken that up. And I'll make the brush a little bit smaller and just kind of focus here in the core. You could sharpen in Photoshop. Again, I'd rather do everything in Lightroom. I like to make a virtual copy and then just kind of go to town and play around with different settings. One thing people ask me is how to enhance like the magentas and certain areas of the Milky Way. Um, and there's a couple different ways to do that. You don't have to buy those expensive filters. You can actually just do some of this in Photoshop. So I'm gonna make a new layer here. Grab my paintbrush and pick a magenta color. And let's 15% opacity is okay. I want to make the brush a little bit smaller. And I'm just going to paint on this guy right here. And let's go a little smaller with the brush. Do that. And there should be some magenta right here. It's very faint, probably because of light pollution. So let's just do a little circle right here as well. You also pick up some light blues, typically in this area. And we can increase the orangey glow that we get right here as well. So now what I wanna do is go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and put that around like 50 pixels. And I also wanna change the blend mode to screen. You can play around, try lighten, but uh, soft light, I mean, but typically I like to use screen. And if it's a little too intense or too unrealistic, let's just lower the opacity. You want it to be subtle. People love to get carried away. I like to keep everything, just a little subtle hints of it. Let's merge that down. So here's the before, here's the after. 
All right, so that wraps up the editing portion of this video. Now, the main thing I just want to stress to you guys is that you pick the proper Milky Way photography technique that's going to work best with whatever location, scenario, or composition you're dealing with. A lot of times you're traveling to these spots that you might not revisit until years later, or you might not go back to there ever again. So you want to give yourself options. So what I mean is a lot of times when I do my road trips and I'm at a location, I like to start taking pictures during astronomical twilight, and then I'll take some longer exposures during true night, and then I'll do a series of images for you know stacking in Starry Landscape Stacker, and then I'll also use my star tracker if it is possible. And that way when I come home, I have a few different options to choose from uh, to give me the best result of you know the cleanest and sharpest Milky Way and foreground as possible. So hopefully these tips help you guys out. Take care, bye bye.